If you are like me, always on the lookout for the latest SOTDs, you might have also been drawn to this particular website a few days ago. What caught my eye was how they mastered the art of simplicity on their landing page, achieving a look that's both understated and striking. You can see they have cleverly added a mix of random elements, whether videos or images, that smoothly animate and drift out of view with each interaction. This approach seems straightforward to me at first, especially since I have dabbled in similar projects but using images. But the idea of replicating this effect with video elements made me curious. It felt like a challenge I wanted to take on. So in today's video, I am excited to walk you through my process of replicating this interactive animation using JavaScript and GSAP. If you enjoy my work, please leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. It means a lot. Now let's get right into it without further ado. For our HTML setup, we'll keep things straightforward. First off, we need a container. This will be where we are going to append all our items, including videos and images using JavaScript. Next up, we are adding a custom cursor. For this, we'll use an image. Lastly, we'll set up a wrapper. This part is for adding a bit of dummy website content. I am going to throw in a navigation and a header to ensure the page doesn't look empty. And that's it. Now let's move on to the styling part. We'll kick things off by zeroing out margins and paddings for all elements and setting box sizing to border box. For the body, we are locking in the viewport's width and height to 100%, setting overflow to hidden to avoid any unwanted scrolling. We'll set the background to black and specify the font family. Moving on to the cursor, we are making it absolute so it can glide freely according to the mouse movement. It will have width and height of 150 pixels, having a white background with the border radius of 100%. To center the image inside, we'll use Flexbox to align it in center, both horizontally and vertically. Now for the dummy content setup, I'll add some generic styling for our wrapper, nav and header. I lean on Flexbox for styling the navigation, ensuring everything aligns perfectly. The header will get some straightforward styling as well to stand out boldly against our dark background. Videos and images are key to our experience. We'll let them take 100% width and height of their containers while keeping their proportions intact using object fit cover. Their respective containers, we are positioning them absolutely so they'll appear right where the user clicks with the dimensions set at 700 by 500 pixels. I'll adjust offset positioning along the Y axis for perfect centering around its origin. I'll also set pointer events to none just so they do not interfere with any other elements on the page. Alright, it's time to dive into the JavaScript to bring everything together. Before we dive in, I want to highlight that I have organized all our resources into a dedicated folder. This folder houses our sound effect file along with all the images and videos we will be using. I am pointing this out because getting the paths and file names right in your script is crucial. If there is a mismatch in the names you use in your script compared to what's in the folder, the elements simply won't appear. So it's essential to double check these details to ensure everything runs smoothly. We begin by creating an array to hold all our items. Next, we select the cursor element using query selector. 
Now, first of all, to achieve the cursor animation, we attach a mouse move event listener. Within this listener, we target our cursor and with GSAP, dynamically adjust its X and Y positions based on the current mouse position. It's crucial to account for the cursor elements width and height in these calculations to offset the new position in order to ensure it aligns centrally with the actual cursor's position. Now, we are ready to add the key animation functionality. We'll begin by attaching a click event listener to the document. First of all, we want to play a sound whenever the user clicks anywhere on the page. So to achieve that, we instantiate a new audio object targeting our sound effect file. By invoking the play method on this object, we ensure the sound effect plays with every click, enhancing the interactive experience of the page. As we continue on adding dynamic elements with each click, we begin by determining whether the next item will be a video or an image. This choice is made using a simple random function to randomly select between the two. Next, we create a div container to hold our chosen element and set a predetermined width for the consistency across all elements. For a video, we randomly select one of our video files. We generate a random number to pick a video and then craft the HTML to embed the video within our newly created container. This includes setting up the video's autoplay and loop attributes for a seamless experience. Similarly, if an image is chosen, we follow a parallel process. A random number selects one of our available images and we construct the HTML to display this image within the container. After crafting the appropriate HTML based on the item type, we take the first child of our container, which is our newly created video or image element, and append it to the items container, which we defined in our HTML. Next, we position the newly appended item precisely where the user clicked. We adjust the left and top style properties of the appended element based on the client x and client y values from the click event. We subtract half of the element's width from client x to center it horizontally at the click point and set the top directly to client y. We also generate a random rotation between minus 5 and 5 degrees. Using GSAP, we then set the initial appearance of the item. Its scale is set to 0 and we apply the random rotation. We ensure the transformation pivots around the center by setting the transformation origin to center. Now let's dive into animating our elements with GSAP. We'll start by creating a GSAP timeline for a sequence of animations. First up, we generate a random scale value ranging from 0.5 to 1. This will ensure that each element scales uniquely, adding variety to the animations. The timeline kicks off with scaling the appended element to this random scale value. We set a smooth transition with a duration of 0.5 seconds and add a slight delay of 0.1 second. Following the scale animation, we animate the element's vertical position, making it move upwards by reducing its Y position by 500 points. We'll keep the opacity to 1 for full visibility during this motion over a span of 4 seconds. This part of the timeline is synced to the start alongside the above scaling effect. As the element ascends, we gradually fade it out by decreasing its opacity to zero over the last second of its journey. This creates a smooth fade out animation. Finally, once the fade out completes, we remove the element from the DOM to clean up. We also remove it from the items array to keep our array in sync with the active elements on the page. This ensures our animation not only looks good, but is also optimized by removing elements no longer in view or needed, maintaining performance and a tidy DOM structure. Make sure you generate the random values for the videos or images accurately based on how many items you have stored in the assets. If these values aren't set correctly, the elements won't appear on click. And that wraps up our guide. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. See you in the next one.